Alright, so this is going to be a tutorial to the any percent category of Lone Survivor the Director's Cut. So, um, we'll just go ahead and get started. You'll want to select a new game if you have a save. If you've never played before, new game will be the only option. Or if you don't have a save, new game will be the only option. But, obviously, you'd want to start a new game. Erase current game if you have one. None of this matters. It's just like, hey, this game is best played in a dark place because it's a spooky game. All right, so timing starts when you select a difficulty. So, like, time would start. And then you get this cutscene at the beginning. After a few seconds, you can just kind of press enter to skip the cutscene. And it takes you into this, like, weird tutorial stage thing that you just kind of have to progress through this tutorial stage going right. It's pretty self-explanatory most of the time. You're gonna wanna drink the coffee when you get on this screen. You don't have to talk to anyone else or do anything. You just drink the coffee and then it teleports you here, which is like back where you started before. And you'll walk to the right for what feels like an eternity. You start to hear spooky noises. You still just walk to the right and then boom, there is a monster. You know it's spooky because you don't have control and you have to watch the monster wiggle around a bit. So yeah, we're just going to watch the monster wiggle. Like I said, this is going to be a basic guide for any percent. Like, it's just going to be any everything you need to learn f to um, if you want to start speedrunning this game. Um, so we're just going to sneak past this monster here. Um... Like I was just saying, it's going to be everything you need to learn for any percent. I'm also going to include a few things that um, are optional, like things you don't have to actually go get. But if you're not confident in your ability to do it or, you know, whatever, that, uh, that you can get. So I'll, I'll explain more on that later. We're just going to kind of skip through this, this dialogue scene here it's not important he tries to touch her and she disappears and she drops the flashlight on the ground picks it up puts it on his shirt so that's the red thing is the flashlight and turns it on and gets jump scared so now we wake up in our actual apartment this is the save space of the game like you would go to bed to save we're never gonna do that in the speed run so if a monster kills us it um it is the end of the run so we're gonna leave his room and go into this room right here like the first brown door that you see and we're going to pick up the key to his apartment and we're going to pick up six pieces of rotting meat from the fridge uh you need both of these to even progress in the game so now we're going to come to this kind of greenish door saying it's like closest to the camera we're going to come unlock it with the key we just got and leave as soon as we leave we're going to place down a piece of rotting meat and then come hide in this little alcove so that this monster will walk past us and when he's past us, we're going to continue to the right and go through the marked door. Now, there's a monster blocking us to the right up here, so we're going to go through this door on the wall to the left. And then we're going to turn on our flashlight inside this bedroom and enter their bathroom and see this gigantic hole in the wall. We're going to enter the hole in the wall and turn off our flashlight because we don't need it on. And now we're going to hold right for like 30 seconds in a dark hallway. This is the most boring segment of the game, in my opinion. It's just a little bit, it's a little unnecessary, in my opinion. Anyway, so yeah, we're just going to keep holding right. I'll go back to what I was saying earlier. I'm going to show you how to get a couple healing items that aren't, you, you'll easily be able to cut them out to save yourself some time, but if you need a backup healing item, like you've gotten hit a bunch, or, you know, or you're just not confident yet in your ability to progress through the game, because like I said, if you die... It's an automatic reset. We never save, so if you die, it takes you back to the beginning of the game, so you might as well just reset at that point. Um, so I'll show you how to get a couple of backup healing items, and I'll mention the backup healing items. This is, um... This one's not really a backup. Oh, it's not letting me... Sometimes if you mash X while you walk by it, you can pick it up. If it doesn't let you do it, you just turn on your flashlight and pick it up. And then we walk through that door. I usually pick up those prong crackers. They're pretty good. So, I didn't explain what I was doing at all, so let me go back. So, walk through that door. There's going to be a door close to the camera here with this enemy blocking us from going further. We'll walk through this door, and we come out here, and we're going to get 
a notification about him saying like, oh no, I can't use meat to get past this enemy, I have to sneak past them. Why they wanted to include two I have to sneak past them tutorials in the game, I'll never understand, but we just sneak past him and enter and exit out this door, the, the fire escape here. And we go into the, and we go into the other one, heading to this marked door that he says is Chie's place. Now in Chie's place, we're gonna head all the way to the right into this bedroom, so we can pick up this weird old doll. Now with the weird old doll, we're gonna we're gonna go over to this door on the left, where the dance party is happening, and we're gonna talk to Chie once. She's gonna say, "I know you have the doll. Give me the doll." And so we give her the doll, and she says, "Thanks. Let's go talk outside." And you say, okay, and when we go outside, we're going to ignore her over there, and we're just going to pick up this handgun that's sitting on the railing for some reason. And when we pick that up, she vanishes, and when we walk back inside, oh no, there are monsters. The game is going to teach us, like, you have to shoot these monsters, but we're just going to put our gun away and leave the room. Because there's no point to killing those monsters. We're going to mash through some text. We never picks up, we never, yeah, excuse me, we never picked up a map. So we'll not have a map when he pulls it out, but when we match through that text, we'll pick up this beef jerky. I like to get this beef jerky. It's like right in your path. Like you don't have to do anything out of your way to pick up that beef jerky. And so it's a nice healing item. So we're going to leave her apartment and we're going to backtrack a little bit. So we're going to go back out the fire escape. Now we're at the enemy that we had to sneak past. And instead of sneaking past him, we're just going to shoot him in the head three times and he dies. And so now we're back to this enemy that was blocking us before. We shoot him in the head three times. Oh, he hits us. And he dies. And so we're going to walk into this room that he was guarding. And when we go in there, we'll pick up the scissors. These are an item we need. That's why we backtracked. So with the scissors, we're going to go all the way back to Chie's apartment. Yeah, I know. We've backtracked twice already. Amazing, right? So we're going to head back to Chie's apartment, which is this room with the weird marking on the door. We're going to head into the room where we picked up the old doll. And instead of the old doll, we're going to move this, like, end table out of the way. And when we go through this hole in the wall, there's an enemy that we'll kill. And since the gun only has 10 bullets per reload, we've now killed three enemies with three headshots. We're at one bullet left, so I went ahead and reloaded. We're going to open this cabinet here and see, oh, look, there's a path through the cabinet. And we see this gross looking skin on the wall so we're going to use our scissors and we're going to select cut and when we cut we cut a path for ourselves now we have an enemy blocking us to the right up here so we're going to walk all the way to the left there's a door on the like side we're going to go outside into the window we're going to turn on our flashlight and go into the window on the left now this is another healing item that you can usually skip but if you find yourself low on health maybe you've been hit a bunch it's decent enough to pick up this can of soda so we're going to go ahead and pick up the soda and go through the door when we head to the right there's a mirror here we're going to ignore that we get a little dialogue scene and we're going to pick up this handgun ammo now it's very important to turn off your flashlight here because if you don't the next room enemies will immediately um start attacking you but so we turn off our flashlight exit out through this door and we see these enemies here we want to go to the right so we need to wait for this guy to start kind of walking so we can move into this hiding spot and we're going to sneak past him as he and if he's nice to us he'll start moving to the left very quickly if he's not nice to us eh, that was meh overall but so we're gonna leave our hiding spot and we're gonna go out the door and now he mentions that this is back right next to his apartment we don't care we're just gonna go down the stairs and pick up these prawn crackers to the left these again these are really nice prawn crackers to get because they're like two feet off of the beaten path like you just walk a little bit to the left and then we're gonna go through this door to the right now when we're through this door to the right this is the first kind of complicated room we're gonna come kill this very first enemy that we see oh he jumped on the ceiling that's bad so I got a little bad luck there. Uh, this is very bad. We 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 want to kill the first enemy, and he's still just jumping on the ceiling. All right, he's dead. I used a lot of ammo there, so hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me later. So when he's dead, we're gonna walk into this room here. And walk back out just to reset the room, reset the enemy's aggros. We're going to walk up to where this enemy is, and we're going to place down a piece of rotten meat and hide in the wall. Now, we want this enemy here to walk past us while we're in the wall. And as soon as he's past us, we're going to walk back out. And so then, when we get close to this other hiding spot, we're going to place down two pieces of rotting meat and go back to hiding in the wall. 
We need to place down two because one piece of rotting meat will only make one of them start walking over. We need to make both of these enemies walk over. When they're past us, we leave and keep going to the left. We're going to enter this first door we encounter. And when we go here, we're going to just go left and go through the first, like, two possible places we can go until we get outside in the back alley. When you go outside in the back alley, you just start walking right, skip through some of those dialogue boxes, and we go all the way to the end, we get a little dialogue scene with a creepy dude in a suit. So, uh, we're just going to mash through this dialogue scene, because it's not particularly important. If it ever ends. Yeah. Dialogue scenes are annoying in this game. But, whatever. So, we're gonna go ahead and mash through that. We're gonna pick up this can that he left. It's empty, but he has a key in it. We're gonna walk a little bit to the left to pick up this handgun ammo, and then turn off our flashlight, because we don't need it anymore. You wanna save that battery. And then we're gonna go back inside, kind of back to the room we were... We just came out of where we snuck past the enemies. And now go all the way to this door on the wall, and use the key we just picked up to get outside. We'll pick up the ammo once we're outside go to the door on the right, unlock it with the key again, and head inside. And we're going to start heading left until we get to another door with kind of like a broken window. We're going to go in there, head immediately right, and press the call button for the elevator, which doesn't work. And then this big old enemy is going to spawn right here. My phone just went off. Oops, sorry about that. And then we're just going to kind of backtrack back outside where we just were. He's going to freak out about the enemy. Don't worry about that. And now we can go down into the basement, which is where we need to go. So, a note about the basement, uh, it's very dark, so it can be hard to see, but where you have to go is actually fairly simple if you just kind of keep in mind where your next objective is. So we're going to go ahead into the basement. The first thing we want to pick up is the fuse. So as soon as we head through the, that door on the right, we're going to start heading right. We're going to see right up here, there's this kind of hallway with an enemy right next to it. We're going to go in that hallway and immediately start heading left. You can see this map on the wall through the darkness. Right, by, like right there, in, right in front of my character right now. We're going to walk a little bit past that map, and you'll see an interact option. This is a door you can go inside. So we go inside, there's an enemy. We're going to kill. go ahead and kill the enemy and pick up the fuse that was right next to the enemy. And now we're going to backtrack a little bit. We're going to go right back through this dark hallway. We're going to appear right next to that enemy, and maybe he'll hit us, maybe he won't. He didn't. We're going to walk left a little bit. After this first kind of lit up door, we're going to turn on our flashlight to pick up these distress flares. You know, it's between this door that has kind of natural lighting and the door that we came in. So that's kind of how you know where it is. We're going to walk right past this door that we came in and we're going to see another door we can go through. In this door, we're going to start walking to the left. There's going to be three enemies up here. We'll just stun them with the flare. See, when you put down the flare, you can walk past all three enemies and we're just going to continue heading left until we pop out now this is a decent enough time to heal so i'm just going to go ahead and eat some prawn crackers and to make this room a bit easier on myself i'm going to turn on my flashlight right now we start walking to the left when the enemies aggro take out the gun and start shooting them these enemies can kill you if you're not careful so that's it that's they didn't but you know just be careful there we're going to start heading to the right a little bit we'll see this door that we can go inside here. I'm gonna walk, th now, everything I'm about to do, I'll let you know how long it is, but I'm about to do something that is very easy to cut out, but if you find yourself in need of another healing item, you can do this. You can walk past this lit up door to this interact prompt, and if you walk in here and turn on your flashlight, boom, there's another prawn crackers. That's all that's in this room. Again, going through there is pretty much unnecessary, but if you are in desperate need of a healing item, that's a good way to do. But anyway, back to the main path. We're going to go into this room right here that's kind of lit up in order to get the generator key. So we're going to come in here, kill the enemy. Oh, I ran out of ammo. Ouch. I'm going to go ahead and heal since I have an abundance of healing items now. We're going to pick up the handgun ammo that's in this room just to kind of have more bullets. And we're going to put our hand inside this hole and we get the generator key, which is what we need. So now we're going to walk past these two enemies that we just killed. And we're going to see this interact prompt in the darkness. We're going to use that to go through this door. And now in this room, we just head left. We don't need to do anything special in this room. Just head left. You don't... 
This room right here, this lit up room, there's a save point in there. You don't worry about that. We just keep walking all the way off the screen until we get into this room with like these weird cage things on the wall. We're going to turn on our flashlight and go in the very first one to pick up more ammo because ammo is always good and you don't want to run out of it. And then turn off our flashlight. We're going to continue heading left, a, not left, right a bit until we see this first Batman enemy, which we're going to take out with a few gunshots, however many it takes. Five is pretty average. So we kill that first one, we walk to the second one, we're going to put down a flare just to stun it immediately. And then after we get that, we'll come to this, this first unlocked cage behind the enemy we flared. We're going to turn on our flashlight, go inside, and pick up the gas can. And we don't want to spend very long in that room, otherwise it'll start to damage us. And then when we get the gas can, we keep heading right until we get this kind of lit up entrance way out and in here we just head right you don't have to do anything special in this room you just keep walking right if you get a text pop up pop pop up pop up just ignore it like press x to get through it you pop out right here we're gonna head all the way to the left just walk off the screen you can't go right because it uh if there's a hole there that the character will be like, oh, I can't keep walking. So when we come into this room with a kind of purplish fog, we're going to start heading right, and we'll see two fat men enemy. Okay, those were both close enough. We'll use a uh, flare to stun them. Hopefully they're close enough that it stuns both of them, but if it only stuns the first one, you can take out your gun and shoot the second one until it falls down. It's not that big of a deal. It's just you hope that they're close enough that you get both because it's a bit faster. But if you don't get both of them with one flare, it's not the end of the world. You just shoot the second one a few times. So this is the door we'll have to go through. We're going to keep walking past it a little bit towards the end of the room. Turn on our flashlight and pick up these flares. You need them. Then we're going to turn off our flashlight and walk back through this door. Now we have an elevator here that we can't use because we need to turn on the generator. So we're going to keep heading right and kind of go through this door into this darkish hallway. In this hallway, we'll just walk left past the save point. You just keep walking left and your character finds the door on the end of the screen. When we go through that door, we're going to walk back here. This very first door we can go through, we'll go through it. And we start heading left again. Now, there's one enemy in this room. Oop, he hit me. Twice. Three times. Okay. So as you see, I'm really hurt now, which is nice because I can show off something. But so this enemy right here really, like I'm really low health going into this part. I could heal, but I'm not going to because as we walk off the edge of this room or yeah, and then keep heading left to this very first door we find, we use our generator key and go inside and we see this grotesque sculpture. When we interact with it, the game is going to fully heal us. We do not need to care about, as long as we can get to this point, it doesn't matter what our health is at, the game will give us a full heal. Now, it's going to give us this cutscene. The reason it gives us full health is because it does this thing where, like, the way the screen was changing was as if you were losing health, and then it brings us to this cutscene. As soon as this kind of nice scene starts, you can just press enter to skip it to come back in the generator room, and we're now full health. So that's why I didn't heal, even though that enemy hit me three times, which is a little unlucky for to get hit three times by a single enemy. But, so now we're in the generator room. Once the character turns on his flashlight, you have control of him. We're going to head all the, way, all the way to the right, and we're going to use the fuse that we picked up earlier. Then we're going to head a little bit to the left to the fuel pipe, and we're going to use the gas can that we got. And then we're going to head just a little to the left to turn on the generator. And that works. We're going to head over here. This orange, you can skip it if you don't need another healing item, but it is a very convenient healing item to pick up if you need it. And then we're going to turn off our flashlight and leave. And we're going to start backtracking towards that elevator. Now, something that I've already shown and talked about, but keep in mind. So to backtrack, we're going to go a little bit to the right, and we'll see this interact prompt on the screen, which is the door that we came in through. You don't need to turn on your flashlight to see these doors. You just need to know where the interact prompts are. And you can't, in this room, you can't even keep walking right. See, if you keep trying to walk to the right, there's a hole there. So you just use this interact prompt prompt in the darkness. That's where you know where the door is. And we're going to start backtracking. So we head to the right in this room. This is the room with the enemy that hit me a bunch. We head right. Now, when we pop here, we're just going to go a little bit left. And again, we see an interact prompt in the darkness. That takes us back to this room with the save mirror. We're going to walk all the way past it to the right until we find the door handle yet again. And now we're in the room with the elevator. Now, before I use the elevator, my stomach's growling, that's not a big deal. Before I use the elevator, I'm going to say one thing. This next segment goes a little bit quickly, like it, it might be a little bit hard to follow. 
because we're going to be running from that giant enemy that we saw earlier in the, like, upstairs. But all we're doing is we're backtracking to get back outside and up, up, upstairs to the first floor, out of the basement. So if you keep in mind that all you're actually doing is backtracking on the exact path that you took to get here, it's actually kind of self-explanatory where you need to go. Obviously, I'll still tell you, but it, it can be a little bit hard to follow because there is, a, like, pretty much no room to, like, look around and be like, oh, no, where am I? So we're going to press the call button, and the character calls the elevator because the generator is now turned on. Now we get a 30-second or so scene waiting for the elevator to come down because this game thinks that that's tense, I guess. So as we wait for the elevator to come down, just keep in mind again, all I'm gonna all we're really doing is backtracking out of the basement. So if you keep that in mind, it can be very it's a lot easier to keep keep track of where you need to go next. So you hear this banging on the wall. You start seeing the door kind of distort because the thing's attacking it, and then it rips through the door right there, and you say, I need to run. We're gonna immediately run off the screen to the left and keep holding left. Now the enemy is following us. This enemy in the game files is referred to as Daddy, so that's what I call this enemy. This enemy is Daddy. Now it looks like Daddy starts to catch up to us, and he actually will get very close, but when he tries to attack us, since we're still just holding left, he won't hit us. Right there, he tried to hit us, but since we're still running, he missed. Now we're gonna see, get to this door and go through it, and we're gonna, oh no, I messed up. So when we go through that door, you hold right, and then you're gonna see this interact prompt here, which is the door you came through, and then hold left. So that mess up wasn't actually a big deal because daddy didn't spawn on the screen yet, but you do want to try to not screw up. So anyway, we still just hold left. We're going to run all the way off the side of the screen, and now we keep holding left. This is the room where we first encountered the fat men with like the kind of grates on the wall. We're just going to hold left. When daddy is chasing you, the enemies will despawn, so that's nice. So you go through there and go through this door and then hold all the way right. So you go through the door on the end of the screen and hold all the way right. That was the save point we don't care about. So we're just going to keep going until we walk off the side of the screen here. This is now the room where we killed the two enemies in the hallway, and we're going to go through the door immediately on the left and then hold right. This is now the room where we snuck past the enemies with our first flare that we put down. So we're going to hold all the way right. When we get past that, we're going to go to this door with the broken window and go out of it, and boom, we're out of the basement. We're going to go upstairs. Now we're going to go through this door to the right here and go all the way back out to the room where we very first saw daddy this door with the broken window and now that he's gone we can come use this door and we spam through this text and he says it's time to go we get like a 15 second transition scene for some reason because again i guess the game thinks that's tense but when we finish getting that transition scene any day now Boom, we are now outside. So like I said, that section, it can be a little confusing at first, but if you keep in mind all you're doing is backtracking, like the exact path you took to get there, it gets a lot easier to keep in mind where you're supposed to go. So once we get outside, we're going to immediately head left and pick up this key. It's the fire escape key. We'll need that for later. And then we're going to start heading right. Now, again, the advantage to Daddy is that he puts us at full health, but, but it doesn't necessarily put us at full health ammo but as you saw there when that ready to rock and now it's fully loaded i tried to reload it turns out i'm full ammo i kind of forgot whatever so we're gonna start walking up i like to turn on my flashlight here to make this part a little bit easier because there are now three enemies that we're gonna have to kill very close to each other oh so i got hit once all right getting hit once by those three enemies is actually pretty decent so you want to be a little bit careful there because it only takes five hits from these enemies to kill you, and if you're fighting three of them at once, uh, they can kill you very quickly. But we got through them with only one hit, so that's nice. We're going to walk a little bit farther to this door that's lit up, and we're going to go right inside, and we're going to get a little weird scene. So this scene is like the only time in the game where you actually have to pay attention to what you're answering, at least in any percent. And so... I. Uh, I'm going to let you know when to kind of actually start paying attention. So, this guy's going to talk to us. He kind of asks us, do you know who I am? Then he teleports to the other side of the screen. And we're going to keep marching through. And then you see this all, t all caps thing he says. And then you get a dialogue choice. This is the choice you need to care about. You want to pick the bottom option because it's faster. Basically, 
depending on what you answer, you get a different kind of cutscene here where they dance. And the top option is slower by like 10 to 15 seconds or something. So you just want to make sure you pick the bottom option in this scene and you're good. And then you just keep kind of mashing through the text until blah, blah, blah. They got to finish dancing and then you have to transition back into, you know, the destroyed world or whatever. I'm going to take a drink of this tea. All right. And so when that's finished, we're in the ruined building. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this gold key immediately next to where we appear and then go all the way to the left and pick up the health tonic. And then we're going to leave the room and walk to the right. So in the city, basically, I didn't mention this earlier, basically all we're doing in the city is we're getting three key items that we need to go fight the final boss. So he feels like collapsing. That's nice. So we're going to head to the right a little bit. There's an enemy here that we're going to go ahead and kill. We're going to keep walking to the right. So the three items that we need to get are actually fairly close together. So when we walk to the right, we'll walk a little bit past that this alleyway here to pick up the ammo on the ground because it's very convenient. And then we're going to head down this alley. Now, down this alley, we'll actually get two items that we need. Um, the first one is down here, but the, you don't have to go down there first. It doesn't really matter which one you get first. But here, we're going to fight two enemies. So, yeah, we killed those two enemies. We're going to keep walking to the right. We'll pick up the ammo, the health tonic, and the crowbar. This is the first of those key items that we needed. We're going to start backtracking a little bit all the way to this alleyway I just walked past. We're going to head down it. We see this first enemy here. We're just going to go ahead and shoot it. Because it doesn't matter. Now this enemy, we want to sneak past him if we can. But sometimes he'll give you a bad pattern. This time he's being pretty nice and let us sneak past him. So we go here and see this body. And in it, we'll get the wire cutters, which is the second key item we need. Again, we're going to sneak past this guy hiding. These fat men don't have eyes, so you can actually get pretty close to them. He was being very nice to us there and let us sneak past him. If he gives you a bad pattern where, like, he walks all the way to the end, it's faster just to shoot him at that point. Don't waste 20 seconds trying to sneak past him if he's just standing at the end where you can't get through. Um, but ideally, he'll give you a good pattern. So let me explain what I'm doing here. After I left that alleyway, I'm gonna keep keep going to the I'm gonna start going to the left here. This is where we picked up that ammo earlier, right before going down that alleyway. Now we're gonna start heading to the left to get our third key item. Like see, we've already gotten two of the three key items that we need. The city can go very quickly. This is where we first entered. If we go through here, we'd be right next to the door with a dancing cutscene. So we walk past that, we walk past this first door, and then we see this alleyway. This is where we need to go, but we walk a little bit farther just to pick up this health tonic. And then I'm going to go ahead and reload because it's a decent enough time. And we walk into this alley. Now, in this alley, we are first going to shoot this fat man until he falls down. Which five hits is nice. And then we're going to kill this thin man immediately. And I'm a little low health, but I'm going to go ahead and heal with a health tonic. And then when we walk past, again, we want this guy to give us a good pattern. He's being... Oh, he's being nice enough to me now. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and take the car battery, which is what we need. Now, this is kind of the riskiest part. Again, he's being a little bit nice and letting us sneak past him. If he's not nice, you can just shoot him. It's not that big. It, it saves more time to shoot him than wait for him if he gives you a bad pattern. Now, we're going to keep walking to the right. Maybe this guy will hit us. Maybe he won't because when the fat men go down, they're not actually dead. He didn't hit us, so we got out pretty scot-free. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reload because why not? So we're going to go left, and we see this door right here that we walked past, this illuminated door. We're going to now walk inside of it, and we see a mirror here. This is going to be the first time we're going to interact with a mirror. What the mirrors do is they teleport you back to your apartment. This is where we first started the game. But we're going to go back into the bedroom of our apartment now, and we see this window right here, the fire escape. We got the fire escape key as soon as we walked into the city. So we're going to use the fire escape key and walk out, and boom. We are now right where we got into the city, and we're going to go down this first alleyway right next to the fire escape. So he gives us a bad feeling, whatever. We see this first fat man. We're going to sneak past him with a flare. The second fat man hits us. Oops. We're going to sneak past him with a flare. The third one was super far away, which is unfortunate. So we're just going to shoot him. Six. Six bullets, whatever. So again, this is sort of like in the basement. Those last, those second two fat men there, the second and third one, I, I mean, 
might be close enough together that one flare gets you past both of them, that's fine. If the flare only hits one of them, just shoot the second one. Don't use your third flare, you'll need that. So then we're going to use the key that we got after that dancing scene to enter Super Flat World. That's why the key said SW. And we're just going to head to the right in Super Flat World. We get this little cutscene where the arcade machine turns on. We just kind of want to match through all the text here until we walk all the way to the end of the room and we get another scene with that creepy man in the suit. Again, we just kind of mash through the text with this guy. Nothing he says is that important. Uh, any day now, any day now this scene will end. And then we're going to leave through the door right behind him. We had left a little bit just to pick up this handgun ammo. And then we're going to start heading right. We can kill this enemy. No reason to It's faster to kill him than to sneak past him. So we're going to start heading right, and there's going to be a group of three more Thin Men. We're going to use a flare to get past them. And then as we head right, we're going to walk to an alleyway with a guy in front of it. If we just mash X as we get to that alleyway, we can usually get through it before that guy blocks us. If... For some reason, like you're not fast enough or you get a really, really bad pattern and that guy is blocking you, just kill him. But most of the time, you can actually just walk towards that alleyway, mashing the interact button, which on a PC or even on Vita with a, con with a PlayStation controller is X, and you can get through that alleyway. So we're going to start heading right. I'm going to go ahead and heal since I have an abundance of healing, like healing food. Um, if you don't have any healing food, that's, this is a decent time to use a health tonic, but we'll pick up this handgun ammo and this other health tonic, and keep heading to the right until we encounter a broken down bus, which we'll encounter pretty soon here, right here. So we go on to this bus that's broken down, and when, if we head up to where the driver's seat of the bus is, and we want to use the crowbar, and then after we use the crowbar, we use the wire cutters, and then after we use the wire cutters, we use the car battery, which is why, again, we needed all three items, and we now turned power onto the bus and we can leave through the door here's a save point right here um i'm not going to use this save point because hopefully the final boss doesn't kill me but um yeah because you wouldn't use this in a run but we're going to keep heading to the right until the final boss spawns which is going to be any moment now Um, the final boss has two attacks, one attack where she hits you very quickly, and one attack where she telegraphs it by raising her arms up in the air and screaming. If she raises her arms up in the air and screams, that means you can also run under her legs, because usually you can't run past her. Like most enemies, if they're not, you know, stunned for whatever reason. So, you get this bit of a dialogue thing here. I just explained some of the final boss mechanics without her on the screen, but whatever. She's about to show up any day now. <clears throat> there she is. So, that's the animation she'll do that lets you know you can run under her legs when you do it. She does that when she first walks on the screen anyway to scream at you. A few things to, I'm going to point out about this boss before actually fighting it, because, you know, I can't get attacked in this dialogue scene. You can shoot the boss either in the legs, in the, like, chest area, it's called the midriff, or in her head. Um, and to shoot her in the midriff or the head, you have to be close enough to her and aiming up and shoot her. Um, she dies fastest if you're shooting her in the head or the midriff. She dies slowest if you're shooting her in the legs. And even slower still is you can actually just dodge the boss for a few minutes and then she'll run away. Um, because when you, when you do enough damage to her, all she actually does is runs away. So, we're gonna try to shoot her in the head or the midriff. Um, and healing if she heals us. If she does that animation where it's like she lifts up her arms and screams and you can walk under her legs, you don't want to get hit by that because like I said earlier, you can take five hits from the Thin Men before you die. That attack is equivalent to taking four hits from the Thin Men. It does like 80% of your health. So if you're if you are hurt even a little bit, that attack will kill you. So you want to do everything in your power to avoid that attack. So now with that all that explained, I'm going to do that. Oh, she's not She's not... Alright. Oh, that's... I'm gonna go ahead and heal. So that's the attack you saw I could run under her. You do want to try to keep her to the right. Oh, I'm shooting her in the legs. Okay, there we go. Oh, ow. So that hit me. I'm immediately just gonna heal. You want to try and keep her to the right, because that means when she runs off the right side of the screen, it's gonna take her less time. So there. She's, she's dead, and she runs off the right side of the screen. 
and I run off too, and we see this dude who's hurt. If you play this game casually or do another category or something, you'll encounter this NPC at some point, as opposed to any percent where we never he see or hear from him, and then he's just dead at the end of the game for some reason. Um, but so yeah, so you want to try and keep Mother as close to the right side of the screen as you can while still avoiding her big hurt attack uh, that can kill you as long as you're not full health. Um, and then when she runs off the right side of the screen, we come and talk to this guy, watch him die, which is sad. Um, and we're now at a point in the game where really n there's actually nothing else in the game that can kill us. So we're just going to spam through this guy's dialogue, and then it's g eventually going to transition us right back into the save room, into the apartment. So I just keep, I keep mashing the interact button here, usually, because it takes me back right where I need to go, but I'll stop here. So when we're back in the apartment... You see it puts us right in front of the fire escape. We're actually going to immediately go leave through the fire escape, and we're going to start heading right. Now, this is why you need to kill these three enemies here earlier, because you walk past here again. Um, and so then we're going to keep walking off the right side of the screen, and then once we get off the right side of the screen, we're going to start heading left. So, like, this is now, you know, if we keep in mind, this is the alleyway where we got, where we got the car battery. So we keep heading left until we get this cutscene with a funky bass line and a cat that appears. So we're going to wait for this cat to... Um, we're going to just kind of mash through the di dialogue of this cutscene while holding left. And then the cat runs away from us because it's scared. And then we're just going to keep mashing the dialogue and we get to the hospital door. We're going to enter in the code that we got from the director after he died. And we enter the hospital. So in the hospital, we're going to pick up the clipboard immediately. Immediately in the front, you need to pick up the clipboard, otherwise the room you need to get into will not let you in. The door for the room won't be open when you get to it. So we're just going to start heading left, walking through by all these hospital doors, um, eventually reaching the room with... There it is, this illuminated room that's open. So we need to go in here, and if you don't pick up the clipboard, the room won't be open. So when we head to the left, the door closes behind us, and we see this pill on the uh, nightstand that is now illuminated. So we go and we take the pill. And then after we take the pill, we're gonna go look at the bed and lay down. And then he's gonna lay down, kinda be like, oh wow, I'm so tired. And then he gets this dialogue box just for a little while. As soon as we press X on this dialogue box, like as soon as we pass through this dialogue box, that's time, so time. That is where time would be. So time starts when you select a difficulty, and it ends when you use that last dialog box in the hospital bed for any percent. So yeah, that is a guide on how to do any percent in Lone Survivor. It's actually fairly simple to learn. Uh, there's not really any big glitches or stuff like that. There's a few advan more advanced speed tech things that I didn't go over in this, because this is just kind of a basic how to do the any percent route, and you don't need... Because there's only a couple of them, and you really don't need them to get a very good, very competitive time in the game. They'll help you a little bit, but they're not, like, they're not run-breaking. Um, in runs, it's usually preferred. I don't know why, for any percent at least, I don't know why it's usually preferred that you include your cutscene credits and stat screen and stuff like that. For other categories... Um, you actually do want to show the, the stat screen that's after the credits because other categories are based on what ending you get. And with those stat screens, it's um, it'll tell you what ending you get. So that's a very good way to confirm, yes, this is the ending that I got. Like, this is the exact ending that I got. The game tells me I got this ending. So, again, it's preferred that you include the, like, ending cutscene and credits and stuff like that in runs that you submit. Um, but it's not mandatory. I still do it. I think it's a good thing to do. It's a good practice to get into. It's, uh, if you're streaming it, it's a nice time to go get some water or something. But since, since this is only a guide and it doesn't really, it's not that important for the guide, there's nothing you can do to speed that up or slow it down. It doesn't matter. It's just preferred to have that in your runs. Uh, I'm not going to include all of that in the guide because it's a decently long credit sequence, but again... Preferred, but not mandatory that you have that in your own runs. So yeah, that is that is a guide on how to do the any percent for Lone Survivor, the director's cut.